Welcome to the Float Podcast, an entrepreneurial journey. My name, my name is Nick Janicki, once a wide-eyed hippie with purple dreadlocks, and now the founder of the True Rest Float Spa, the fastest growing floating franchisor in the world, and CEO of Float Pod Technologies, the industry leader in float pods. Follow me along in my entrepreneurial journey with what will become the next billion dollar industry to enter the health and wellness sector. Let's connect with world-class athletes, actors, musicians, doctors, industry experts, and explore the mindsets of powerful entrepreneurs. Let's get this floating party started. Welcome to the Float Podcast. My name is Nick Janicki. Uh, as usual, our sponsor is the Float Pod Technologies, as well as True Rest Franchising. And we have, wow, let's see here. We're in the almost the second quarter of 2016. We have nearly 10 stores open. 14 within the next 30, 60 days with about 30 more stores pending. So we're very, very excited about our franchisee growth. Uh, it's really quite tremendous. Um, and in this podcast, what I wanted to talk a little bit about is uh, trademarks and specifically about how I uh, trademarked Float Pod. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about True Rest being trademarked, our taglines being trademarked, uh, the strategy and marketing behind how we trademarked and why we trademarked the things we did. And so uh, this is kind of personal for me. My name uh, tends to get bashed around a little bit in the flotation industry as the BP or the Monsanto of floating because we're, we're growing and helping more people, which inherently I don't think that helping more people and growing stores and helping business people open under a brand is by any stretch um, BP or Monsanto. I'm not uh, really for GMOs, but um, at any rate, what's happened is we have a trademark that we filed in 2013, uh, the Float Pod, and I came up with this in 2010. So 2010 was a float conference in San Francisco. At that time, there was, I'm going to say, maybe 20 centers in the United States and just one center in Canada, believe it or not. Um, and at that time, I was starting to call um, pods uh, float pods. And I wasn't the first person to come up with this name by any stretch, um, but there wasn't very many pod-like devices for isolation therapy in the United States at that time. Uh, again, we're talking maybe 20 centers in 2010. Um, I was the first person to buy the isopod in 2009 and then they were shipped and whatnot, and we installed them. And at that time, Isopod was simply calling their product the Isopod and uh, float tank. Uh, Superior float tanks at that time uh, also was not using the term float pod. They were using the term uh, the Genesis pod. And so I did some research and I said, okay, I want to start a company. I want to use a word that could be trendy, that people could quickly understand, not sensory deprivation, not isolation tanks not sensory deprivation tanks. I wanted two words that were simply put together that were easy to understand. And so for me, that was float pod. Um, I did some research in 2009, 2010, 2011. In 2012, um, we formed a company called Float Pod Technologies. I formed, uh, and then we made the product name, The Float Pod. And I said, um, at the conference in 2010, hey, what do people think of this name, the float pod, and it was kind of poo-pooed. It was very much, we've been calling these isolation tanks for, for 40 years. We've been calling this, uh, these uh, float tanks for 40 years, and the change at that time wasn't appreciated. The suggestion wasn't even appreciated. This is what I felt, is that the change was scary for people, is people wanted to go back to the past, dig up what had happened in the past, and relive it. Whereas typically as what I do is I look three to five years in the future and I see through marketing research analysis, um, you know, and I have some of the best marketing coaches in the world. I'm part of the 25K group uh, with Joe Polish. Um, uh, you know, I have some of the best marketers, uh, Michael Fishman, Brian Kurtz. Uh, I've talked to Cameron Harold just about management. So I have some of the best mentors in the industry, the health and wellness industry on, on my side. Uh, David Humphrey is on our board of advisors. He was the CEO of Massage Envy. So some masterminds when it comes to business strategy and marketing. So going back to the story, um, at that time I said, okay, is this term being used in a commercial setting with only 20 pod, 20 pod centers in 2010? Uh, I filed, did a trademark search. No one was using the trademark. It wasn't being used on the internet, float pod. 
The term wasn't being used on the internet, wasn't being used on anybody, any manufacturer site whatsoever. And so we trademarked the term. Uh, it was a TM. About a year later, it, become re it became registered, which means um, you know we basically own the service mark. It's registered with a country of the United States, um, and we're not registered in Canada. True Rest is registered in Canada and the United States, just so everyone knows. Um, and so we did that in 2000, filed in 2012, it became a trademark in 2013. So, um, you know, what other people were calling their pods at, at that time was the such and such pod, the Genesis pod, you had the ISO pod, you had the Dream pod, you had uh, Skate pod came out, you know, now there's, you know, whatever, two dozen other pod companies. Um, so we were the only one using float pod. We were pushing the term. We were marketing the term. I spent uh, three years marketing that term and tens of thousands of dollars marketing that term. Um, when we registered the trademark three years ago, I had a discussion with my internal board of advisors at that time. And they said, this is a very, very simple trademark. This is a very simple mark. And it's possible this mark in the future would become the generic term for a category of pods, tanks, or rooms. Okay, so we took that risk. And we said, uh, no one's using it right now. The industry as a whole has kind of poo-pooed it. And um, you know we're gonna go ahead and take the risk. So when we looked three to five years, um, or when I look three to five years in the future now, I have other products we're, we're looking to come out with in the residential industry. Um, right now, if we use the terms I'm thinking about using, I think they're also gonna become the generic trendy name for the product. So right now we're going through a rebranding and a remarketing here at FloatPod where we may restructure the brand to make it Apple of computers. So right now, uh, because it's becoming trendy, um, which again, it wasn't in 2013, keep that in mind. We didn't form this in 2016, we didn't form this in 2015. Up until about six months ago, no one else was using this even on the internet. Um, our competitors just put this on their pages about six months ago. So in 2013, it was registered trademark, nobody had an issue with it. 2014, FloatPod was a trademark, nobody had an issue with it. 2015, FloatPod was still a registered trademark, nobody had an issue with it. Um, 2016, boom, flood of awareness about FloatPods. We were featured in Time Magazine. FloatPods were featured in the Wall Street Journal. True Rest was featured in Time Magazine. So we had a lot of positive press and the mainstream consciousness has now absorbed float pod as a generic term. And um, you know, what we're thinking is for our own sake, we want to differentiate ourselves from other competitors. So right now we're not called the float pod Mach 1, the float pod Mach 2, we're simply the float pod. And so the only way that I can protect our product name versus a competitor's name is with our unique trademark, the float pod. So right now, currently, it is the only way that I can differentiate myself from the Genesis pod or from the ISO pod is by having that unique name. The float pod has no other descriptive name other than what it is, the float pod. Um, an example, one of my favorite examples I like is the big wheel. The big wheel, everyone knows what the big wheel is. It's a big wheel on a, on a bike, it's a kid's bike. Big wheel, ugh, big wheel is a trademarked term believe it or not. Now there's other companies that used a big wheel and it's common, but the, the beauty about marketing is the simplest things are what's gonna catch on to the psychology of a consumer. And so what's super important when you trademark something uh, or if you do anything in marketing is to make the messaging simple. And that's what we did. And unfortunately it almost backfired on us because it's so simple that it was picked up as the generic term. Now when I go to Wikipedia and I look up isolation tanks, uh, float pod is not mentioned, nor is float rooms. So those terms are just recently becoming descriptive. Um, the iPod, for example, Kleenex, these are all trademarked terms. Um, and so again, in 2013, we did not do this out of malicious intent. We, we did this, we were the trendsetters calling these float pods in 2013. I know that was only three years ago, and now that we're starting to send cease and desist letters to protect our brand and to protect our intellectual property, we're having people call us and saying, oh, I've been using the term float pod for 30 years. Oh, I've been using the term float pod for five years. Well, 30 years ago, well, I just don't believe that. 
<laughs> there was the Samadhi tank, and that was the only commercial tank there was. No one was calling these float pots 30 years ago. Five years ago, it's possible, but you actually would have been shunned, much like I was, by using the term float pod. Um, so now it's become trendy, and instead of giving float pod technologies credit for establishing not that term, but establishing the association with that term in a marketing setting, you know, we're getting a lot of uh, backfire. And so there's a reason I bought the, the domain floatpod.com. It was actually being used by a competitor at that time, believe it or not. And I called that competitor up and I said, wow, floatpod.com, that sounds like a great name for a product. What are you gonna name your product? I'm not gonna tell you what, what they named their product, but it wasn't the float pod, it was something else. So they weren't considering that a category. Um, so when we bought that, there was no malicious intent meant. Um, and right now all we're trying to do is protect our intellectual rights. Um, so basically, you know, right now we haven't determined what we're going to do from a strategy standpoint in terms of rebranding. Uh, I will very likely at the float conference come out with a, a new brand for the technology side of the company. So we could and can differentiate ourselves better. Um, but until then, the name of my company is Float Pod Technologies. I own the rights to that. The name of the product is the Float Pod. So if you want to use the term Float Pod, you have to buy a pod from Float Pod Technologies. If you bought a pod from someone else, it's very likely that their formatting is the XYZ pod. So if you're confused on how to uh, convey your product to a consumer, it's just XYZ pod. Uh, Isopod, the Genesis pod, Evolution pod, Dream pod. Uh, the float spa out of Hungary, the float away float tank. Uh, there's quite a few of them now. The evolution pod. You know, so just use the name of the actual product that you are featuring in your in your business. Um, one of the things I wanted to go through on this podcast was um, focus and energy. And there's something that's happening in the industry as a whole that they believe that. Um, you know, whatever you focus on is going to grow and whatever you give energy to is going to blossom. And so when I read this post, and I'm going to go through this post on Float Love. So we sent out these cease and desist letters to people that were using our trademark. Um, and, you know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, and the assumption is that we are intruders in the industry, that we're, we're trying to destroy the industry. And I have to say that I am divine and I know my mission and I know my vow. And my vow is to grow floating to a million people, and I want to help a million people through floating. When someone walks out of the pod, when they've connected with the divine essence of the Fa, when they've connected with the divine essence of the Tao, they're relearning that they themselves are divine. Now, the benefits that we portray to the exterior world are not of divinity. We've stripped our brand of that because the experience will carry that through without us needing to convey the message. So simply stated, our brand is concentrating on pain relief, it's concentrating on sleeping better, and it's concentrating on relaxation. Meditation can fall under relaxation. And so, um, you know, I'm very clear what my mission is, and I know that it is my mission to grow this through passionate people uh, that want to grow the brand. And so when I start reading through these uh, comments on uh, Facebook, you know, I'm seeing, um, you know, let me answer some of these questions. So people are kind of confused on how trademarking works. So uh, this guy, Garrett K, talks about what's up with float pod sending out cease and desist letters. Um, this is usually best addressed in private, not this one. Um, and just kind of blowing it up. Terrible, however, not surprised, says Zach. Uh, Sandra says, not in the spirit of the float community I know, love, and support. We've described our pod style tanks as float pods for nearly five years, um, perhaps. But when I went to the to the float conference in 2010, nobody was calling these float pods. Um, I think Sandra Center was open at that time. But um, but the way the trademark works, if everyone's clear, is a trademark is about using it first in a category specific to the business that you are in. So our category is. Uh, whirlpools, uh, specialty spas, it's category 011. Um, and so that is the category that we're saying that we were the first to use that term in, uh, in, in 2013. So the industry had been around for 40 years. The term float pod did not get established until uh, 2012, 2013. And again, uh, we didn't intend for it to become the generic term, though now people are considering it as such. 
I would, I would structure the argument that most of the manufacturers were calling it such and such pod. No one was using the name float pod. So my belief is if we didn't market it, if we didn't push it, the word float pod may not be the descriptive term used for that category. It could just be called float tanks, uh, float spas, who knows? Um, let's see here, Nicholas C. Janicki, what do you have to say for yourself? Um, people are trying to be Google Jedis and prove that other people were using the term before me. Um, well, actually, going from a TM to R, I had approved that as well to the government um, that we were the primary one using the term float pod. That's how we got the trademark to begin with, just so everyone knows. Greasy. <laughs> wow, that's a very high horse there. Um, and so now they're trying to prove this wrong. So the key, if you want to go down the wormhole of shutting down the uh, float pod trademark, it's not about proving who used it first, because uh, we did use it first in a commercial setting. What you want to do is the key here is proving that it is indeed a category for descriptive use. So the float pod, a float tank, a float room could be described as the category for use. So that's what you want to do if you want to shut down a trademark that you feel is being used inappropriately for a generic product. Um, and so that is the way to go. And so they're saying, uh, if everyone got together, wants to write a grounds for cancellation paragraph and post it here, and each of us can be used to make this, uh, to use the ridiculousness of this trademark to be realized and canceled. And of course, again, this is considered ridiculous in 2016, but in 2013 it was not. I was poo-pooed in 2010 for using the term float pod. Um, so again, we're probably going to go through a rebranding process. Um, we'll be announcing that, but that's how trademarks work. Um, so if you're if you're strategizing on a term, uh, make sure that it's something that is not descriptive in nature, um, but also you know structure brand in a way that everyone can get behind it. So what Apple did so well is they picked something so different from a computer, then that brand became well known in the psychology of uh, that industry. And so when you say Apple computer, you know you're talking about Apple computer. Um, and so going forward, we're, we're considering strategies to do something similar. Um, and again, that'll be announced in the Flute conference. I love this comment. Someone saying we should give everyone the cold shoulder that's part of True Rest. Considering True Rest will make up about 25% of the overall float conference, actually 10% will be True Rest and another 15% will be float pod clients. You're basically shunning about one out of four people at the float conference. Um, so what I have to say, you know, it makes me really sad that people are saying that, you know, my letter is a reflection of the industry and then that's simply uh, similar to BP. And the only thing I have to say to that is when I look through these posts, it's, it's hate, it's hate, it's hate, it's hate, it's hate, Joe, it's hate mongering, Kevin, 5% some logic, hate, 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 hate. This is about 60% hate. It's about 20% hate mongering. It's about 10% self-righteousness and only about 5% logic. And what is it as human beings that we have to rally together and destroy what someone else has created? I didn't create the float pod term and copyright it, or trademark it, excuse me, in 2016. It was done in 2013. I've had that trademark for over four years almost. Um, and only now is it becoming an issue because other people would like to use it. And so that is all I want to say on the issue. Uh, we're very excited about the Float Conference. Float Pod Technologies is coming out with some super cool technologies. I still believe, and I'm also poo-pooed for this, but I believe the industry as a whole is about collaborative technologi technologies. And I think collaborative technologies is going to take this from what used to be coined sensory deprivation into sensory acceleration. We're going to be interacting with, changing, um, and facilitating healing on, on a greater scale but we can't use the word healing. Um, so anyway, I wish you all the best. That is my official response on how trademarks work and with this specific issue. And I will talk to you later. See you later. Bye.